In 2009, the U.S. Navy finally began construction of the first new type of aircraft carrier in nearly 35 years. Named after former President and Naval Aviator Gerald R. Ford, the USS Ford fully takes the nuclear supercarrier into the 21st century. The technological innovations built into the new ship, while causing the inevitable delays involved in building a first-in-class vessel, will keep the Navy's unique fleet of super flat tops the largest and most advanced in the world for the foreseeable future. USS Ford follows in the steps of the highly successful Nimitz-class carriers. Construction began in 2009 at Huntington Ingalls Industries in Newport News, Virginia the same location where the Ford's predecessors were built. Indeed, the Ford class resembles the Nimitz ships in many ways, they measure 1,106 feet long versus the Nimitz's 1,092 feet. Both classes weigh the same. Approximately 100,000 tons fully loaded. Layout is similar, too, with an island on the starboard side, four catapults and an angled flight deck. The ship is powered by two new design AB1 nuclear reactors. The reactors are manufactured by Bechtel, which beat out longtime naval reactor giants General Electric and Westinghouse for the reactor contract. Together, the two reactors create 600 megawatts of electricity, triple the 200 megawatts of the Nimitz class. That's enough electricity to power every home in Hampton, Virginia, Pasadena, California. Ford is going to need that power, not only to reach its estimated top speed of 30 plus knots but also the new electromagnetic aircraft launch system, which uses electric currents to generate strong magnetic fields that can quickly accelerate an aircraft to take off speeds. The system is touted as easier on aircraft, extending their service lives, easier to maintain in general and capable of generating up to 25% more sorties than the older steam catapult system. The new carrier will also use a new system to land aircraft. The new advanced arresting gear uses a water turbine and induction motors to halt the momentum of landing carrier aircraft. Like electromagnetic aircraft launch system, the AAG is expected to be more reliable than the existing aircraft arresting system on Nimitz-class ships and easier on airframes. Ford will also have the most modern radar systems in the fleet. The Ford will have the new dual-band radar which combines both the X-Band and or Spy 3 Aegis radar and the S-Band volume surveillance radar. DBR is capable of search, track and multiple missile illumination, detecting enemy aircraft and missiles and then guiding evolved Sea Sparrow missiles to intercept. For self-defense, Ford will have two MK-29 missile launchers with eight evolved Sea Sparrow missiles each, and two rolling airframe missile launchers. It will also have four phalanx close-in weapon systems for point defense against aircraft, missiles and small ships, and four M250 caliber machine guns. Ford's generous electrical capacity means that the ship could someday mount laser self-defense weapons. Powered by the ship's nuclear reactors, such a system would have a virtually limitless ammunition supply, vastly increasing the ship's defensive capability. The carrier air wing will form the carrier's primary means of deploying both offensive and defensive firepower. The Ford class will embark two squadrons of 10 to 12 F-35C Joint Strike Fighters, two squadrons of 10 to 12 F-18EF Super Hornets, five EA-18G Growler Electronic Attack Jets, four E-2D Hawkeye Airborne Early Warning and Control Aircraft, and two C-2 Greyhound Carrier Onboard Delivery Planes. It will also carry eight MH-60S Seahawks helicopters. Down the road, it will embark the MQ-25 Stingray Refueling and Intelligence Collection Drone, the eventual planned sixth-generation fighter to replace the Super Hornet, and, if Senator John McCain has his way, a new long-range strike drone. The V-22 Osprey Tilt Rotor is also set to replace the C-2 Greyhound in the carrier onboard delivery role.
Ford's entry into active service will once again raise the Navy's carrier force to 11 ships. The Navy's carrier fleet is unique in having a congressionally mandated minimum force level. U.S. Code Section 5062 states, the naval combat forces of the Navy shall include not less than 11 operational aircraft carriers. 4. Now the Navy is operating with a waiver. More ships will follow. USS John F. Kennedy, the second aircraft carrier to bear the name of the 35th President of the United States, is under construction at Newport News and expected to enter service in 2020. The third carrier, Enterprise, is expected to begin construction next year and will join the fleet in the early 2020s. The current push by President Donald Trump and the Chief of Naval Operations to a 350 to 355 ship fleet will likely include at least one additional Ford-class carrier in the near term. Designed with the latest technology, Ford is not without problems. Both electromagnetic aircraft launch system and the advanced arresting gear system have run into considerable problems, and the Navy briefly pondered finishing Kennedy with a more traditional, proven arresting gear system. Despite developmental delays, it appears both new takeoff and landing systems are nearly ready. According to the Navy, Ford is 99% done and 93% of testing is complete, 